In today's video, we are going to look at active versus passive learning. How you study is just as important as what you study. Your study methods determine how long it's going to take you to learn all the material and how effectively you're going to remember these materials in the long run. So we're going to consider these two different things and see how you can make certain changes to your study perhaps to improve your memory, to improve your understanding and ultimately to crush the USMN. Let's look at passive learning. With passive learning, we'll be looking at things like watching lecture videos and reading. So watching videos, reading lecture slides, reading notes, whatever the case is, or even reading textbooks, all of these will be considered passive learning. If you're at the point where you're preparing for USMLE already, then I, I want to believe you're not trying to read textbooks because that would be ineffective. But if you're in the MDs and you're watching this video right now, especially if you're in MD2, MD3, at the, I think that's where you begin to learn pathology. If you're yet to begin learning pathology or you're taking pathology next semester, then I'll recommend you pick up the Robbins, the basic Robbins textbook, not the big Robbins, the smaller Robbins, the basic Robbins textbook and try to finish that book. It was the best decision I made in med school. I read that book three times. I'm not asking you to read it three times. Um, you probably won't be, won't be able to get through it that number of times, but at least finish that book one time. If you can do that, you will be amazed at what you will become. But for you as some of these students, watching videos is probably what you do most of the time. A lot of you are probably reading a lot of notes, whether you're reading UWorld notes, Kaplan notes, whatever, even UWorld explanations. You're reading a lot of things. Now, you want to understand that reading and rereading, especially, watching videos and rewatching the videos are all passive approaches to studying. Highlighting your book as you read it and using different colors to make it look beautiful and all of that is very nice. They look good. But these are not the most effective ways to make sure that you are cementing those information in your memory. In fact, if you look at your first aid in the first few pages of the book, before you even get to the content itself, they tell you that rereading, highlighting are the least effective methods of study. In fact, they tell you that based on their analysis, students that reread, do a lot of highlighting, don't perform as much on, as well on the USMLE as students that use more effective approaches to study. If you are going to read a book like The First Aid, for example, I expect that you should be watching your videos along with The First Aid simultaneously. And an active approach of study here is going to be annotation. I tell my students that there is a component of memory that has to do with you reading the information, watching the video, whatever the case is. And there is a component that has to do with you actively writing down the information, not like just copying everything you're reading, but you know what I'm talking about, annotating your notes. Annotation is a very important way to help improve the probability that you're going to make better memory. Another active approach is going to be discussion. Don't hesitate to talk about information. One of the things I see with a lot of medical students is they don't like discussing medicine. I see this a lot with students around Botu, around where I stay, and I've seen it with students from other places as well. Students don't really like to talk about medicine. When we come together, we want to talk about a lot of other things, but we just don't want to talk about medicine. We avoid pronouncing difficult words. We avoid discussing difficult concepts. They're like, oh, my brain is doing textbook and stuff like this. No, don't avoid discussions. Discuss concepts. And this ties us back to study groups or study partners. You want to have, if you have one or two persons that are actually interested in learning, right? That you can sit down with and you bounce off these informations from each other. And you are going to realize that you understand better you identify your weaknesses. Sometimes you think you understand something until you begin explaining it to someone else and you realize oops, there's a loophole. And many times those loopholes are the weaknesses that make you fail questions. You do a question, you think you know it, you pick an answer. When you're doing the correction, you realize, oh my God, I thought I knew this. Oh, I made a mistake, right? You can correct all of those errors by having discussions with your friends, having discussions with the group or whatever the case is. Talk to your teachers as well. When you give a teacher a response, sometimes you think you're doing well explaining the information and then your teacher tells you, oh, okay, but you have, I think you should put it like this. This is a more effective way or this is a better way to look at it than the one you think you already know. The second thing you want to do in as far as um, active learning is concerned is going to be application. Practice questions, practice questions, 
practice questions. Many times, what makes the difference between two students is that one person has spent a lot of time practicing questions than the other person has. And when I say practice questions, I don't mean you should just go and sit down and finish your U-World Bank. No, I mean practice questions effectively. To sit down with a question and make sure that every single component of that question is well understood from the meaning of every word that is used in the question. I've seen my students read questions and there is one or two words in the question that they don't understand, but they just read past it and read the question and try to understand the question as a whole, right? Not understanding the meaning of those words. And then I stop them. I say, what does this word mean? And then you find that they actually don't understand what the word means. If there are words in questions, vignettes that you don't understand, you need to know the meaning of those words. Right, Because not understanding those things means that you don't fully understand the question. In some cases, you will get the question correct anyway, but oftentimes it may become a big problem. You may not even understand that that is the problem. You just think, oh, I don't know why I'm, I'm failing, but it's because you don't fully understand the meaning of words. So practice questions, that is one way to interact with the material. That is one way to apply the knowledge that you have already learned. Finally, you want to teach this information to other people teach it to other people. If you've learned something new, especially if it's a pathway, a complex kind of thing, teach it to someone else. Something as simple as the renin aldosterone system, the RAS pathway. Try explaining the RAS pathway to someone. A lot of my students, they think they know the RAS pathway until I tell them, okay, explain it to me. And then they begin to get stuck here and there. Or I take them to somewhere in between. How does increased aldosterone affect by by carb levels for example and then you realize that oh it's not so it's shaky right it's not so smooth but when you explain to someone else you identify these flaws you fix them and you do better so it's not enough to just watch lecture videos and just watch them regurgitate them over and over again that is not very good it is not enough to just read notes and read them over and over again again that is not very good you need to discuss with people, get someone, I hope you can find someone, get someone that you can discuss with. Begin to annotate your notes, read and write. Don't just read, read and write. Annotate your first aid. If you have a first aid, you should have a first aid, that's the most important resource. Annotate your first aid. Don't try to memorize it, try to understand it. Have a discussion group, like I said, and teach the information to someone else. Whatever you find difficult to understand, read it and then go explain it to somebody. If you have a coach, a tutor, explain it to your tutor, explain it to your teacher and they will tell you how well you are doing or if you actually understand it like you think you do. Until next time, I will see you in the next video. Remember to like, remember to subscribe, hit that subscribe button as if it owes you money.